Hello fellow book nerds, this is Gabby and today we are talking about The Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dawn. I think I said The Pretty Dead Queens but it's just Pretty Dead Queens and I had questions from the beginning. Is it the queens that are pretty dead? Are pretty queens that are dead? I guess it's both. It's very complicated. <music> Hello, today we I am back with another book review and we are talking about Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dawn. If you don't know, Alexa Dawn is a YouTuber. She talks a lot about writing, about reading and book publishing in general and I really enjoy her channel which is the reason why I signed up to be a part of her um, street team which really just means like I got the arc and like I can shout about this. Um, so I'm very happy to have gotten the arc. The book is coming out matter of days if not already out and I wanted to talk to you guys about it. So let's start with a little bit of a synopsis. Pretty Dead Queens we follow Cecilia whose mother recently passed away from cancer and she decides to well decides it's her only option. She moves uh, a little bit further down to North California from Los Angeles um, to live with her grandmother. Now her grandmother is somewhat of a local sensation because she wrote uh, many 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 successful books but the first book she ever wrote was about um, a girl who gets murdered in school at a pro um, and she's home a coming queen and it was based on a murder that happened in that little town when the grandmother was a young woman herself. So Cecilia is thrust into this new place. She and her grandmother fell out. They were in that Oh, her mother and her grandmother fell out, so her, her her and her grandmother didn't really know each other that well. And she has to go from the super big city to this tiny little town that's super well knit. Everyone knows each other, um, and she has to navigate that. And on top of that, there's a murder that happens. So the exact similar, exact same or similar circumstances of what seems like a copycat murder of that murder many many years ago, and that murder from the book happens when the homecoming presumed queen dies and it's very very similar circumstances. So that's the basic plot and um, I guess we can get into details as usual you can skip down below and see what you want to actually hear about. Starting off with writing as per usual. Overall it was fast and frolling I think um, an improvement from previous works, especially like the earlier works of the author. And um, it was just fun. It was good. It really had me hooked. There are a couple of weird sentences, but I'm assuming that's because I got an arc that would like an, a year before the book was out. So I'm assuming those weird things will be fixed and it's just an arc thing. Um, but yeah, the writing, I have no complaints. It did a really good job in keeping the pace and the um, excitement going and really got you in the head of the main character. I felt really modern as well, which I think is really good when it feels like this is actual teenagers that are actually in 2022 teenagers, not were teenagers 10 years ago, uh, which I think can be a little difficult sometimes. Uh, but I think um, the author did a really good job. Plot. So I know that the original title of this book was Murder She Texted because she it was kind of inspired by Murder She Wrote, which I had to Google what that was because I knew the title but I didn't know what it was about, which was a TV series that got went on for like 12 seasons or something, I don't know. But it was about a woman who lives in a small town and is an author of mystery novels and is kind of like older and retired. And I'm assuming that's what the inspiration was. Like the grandma character was inspired by the main character from Murder She Wrote. I've never seen the series, I'm not sure, um, but it's a very similar vibe of a small town with uh, crime in the past and kind of profiting prof profiting off of that and all that. But overall I think the plot was really strong. This was a really strong mystery that had me going. We have kind of two mysteries going at the same time and I must say it was really thrilling to kind of unravel both of the mysteries because they both had a satisfying ending. I think it just made such 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 an improvement on the author's previous book, The Ivies, which I really liked up until the reveal because I felt like it was Disney villain monologue cartoonish and the the motivations were stupid um, but this one you know it was a little bit 
intense but in good ways I mean it really went there it kind of went like ridiculous um but there was a lot of heightened emotions through the whole series and uh, through the whole book and I don't know I had a really good time with it I think the resolution was interesting and and made sense and it just kind of flowed well together there's like a little bit of sprinkle of the heathers if you ever seen that movie or that musical I think if you enjoyed that you might enjoy this I know I did um and yeah there was twists and turns I had a good time like it went quite dark for a YA thriller as well I would say this is like pretty extreme not in terms of maybe what's depicted but just like the people that did it and the motivations behind it kind of disturbing not gonna lie um but overall it was a good time and I think yeah much much improved from the Ivy's hood which just I was like wow we we had such a good build-up just to finish a Disney villain territory which was upsetting okay characters so we have Cecilia who's really cool actually I really liked her I think she was really bold which I appreciate because a lot of like times uh, main, main female characters especially in YA like would never just tell a boy hey I like you how about we go on that day or something yeah Cecilia is bold Cecilia really goes for it which I appreciate and um, she's really dealing with grief which is something the author was dealing with when she was writing the book because her mother passed away from cancer as well and I think that was an interesting aspect of the character how she navigated that I think it was all done pretty well yeah Cecilia was just like very spunky and very like outgoing and bold her motivations really made sense because it was really like she was just trying to distract herself from this terrible thing that happened and she, if a murder is gonna do it a murder is gonna do it love interests they were interesting I think they did a good job they worked pretty well and I was invested in in them so that's really good kudos and then friend group I would say this was really well executed friend group with distinct characters who had distinct voices personalities I didn't get them confused at all which is kind of impressive I think the dynamics between them weren't cliche which sometimes is really hard to do especially why fantasy it's like it all made sense and it all kind of flew together and you really understood how these people work but it wasn't like typical high school drama where everyone is a jock or a cheerleader and that's the role they have and that's the role they will occupy and they have those relationships that are um conducive to that like it was more interesting than that which I appreciate and I really really like the characters in the end. I'm realizing on the plot there was like one thing that I don't think was explained and again maybe it's because I'm in an arc or maybe I wasn't reading properly like I can explain it in my head but I don't think it was ever actually said on the page which to me makes kind of little like little sense like you need to clarify that but I don't know maybe maybe in the finished version it's said I don't know. Themes um I mean a massive theme is exploration of grief. I think it was done really well I mean there was like a disturbing amount of kids with dead parents I was kind of like how is every person's parent dead in this town but whatever um I understand that it was the kind of trying to like connect with each other and it, it served a purpose um and I think the Cecilia really going through grief was was very honest and very like painful to see but really important as well it was definitely important for the author to explore it and and I've seen it in her videos said and I've seen it in the letter before explained so I can totally appreciate that and I think it was done well I don't feel like there was like a catharsis for for this arc of dealing with grief I don't feel like truly the character worked through it maybe that's because there's no catharsis to grief maybe it's it's just kind of shit and and it's kind of less shit after a while I don't know um what the intention was I think it was overall a well ex explored theme I don't just feel like it wasn't really as wrapped up as I thought it'd be um at least from the emotional standpoint but at the same time again like I don't think grief is that easy so fair enough I don't know what other things there were I definitely a little bit of like fame because the grandmother is so famous in this town they've got like she's got like a whole con that people come to and talk about her and it's very intense um and she's definitely got like fans and they're very invested in her as well so you've got all of that stuff as well um which i think was quite really interesting to see i'm trying to think like what other things there were i don't think it was like theme heavy I don't know I really enjoyed it like overall um I thought it was a good time it was like a really enthralling mystery I pretty much read it in 24 hours uh, which shows that I like it I, like I woke up at like 7 a.m and read 70% of the book remaining and I was done by like 
11 or something, I don't know, like I just kept reading because it was really engrossing, really fast, really fun as well at times even though it was like kind of sad and, and a lot about grief but also like executed really well so I don't know, I really had a good time with it, I would say that I would recommend it even if you're not that big on YA thrillers because this felt a little bit more ambitious than some YA thrillers or like the younger leaning YA thrillers, this is more of an older leaning why thriller if that makes sense i hope it does um but yeah i had a good time with it and i would really recommend it i gave it four stars and i think it was a, a really an improvement from the ivies which i already really liked and would recommend um so overall like really good uh why mystery and thriller and i would say go give it a shot because it's fun and I think that's everything I have to say. All right, let me know. Have you read Pretty Dead Queens? I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if this video came out a little bit after or you're watching it after it came out, um, let me know what is your favorite thriller trope or mystery trope. Let me know. I don't know. I do like some mistaken identity, but I don't know if I like it in the thriller. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, let me know on yours, I'm curious to hear. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you could comment, like, and subscribe, I really, really appreciate it, it really helps me out. But that's it for me, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.